Hey, what's going on out there? YouTube family, we are back. Me and Lucas here to talk more about Zack Snyder's Justice League. It is going to be out soon in less than two days. The last final discussion about this <laughs> uh, project. <laughs> well, for so, me, the last final discussion about this project. Yeah, so there is going to be a spoiler-filled discussion. Um, I, I don't know how many people are going to have in there. Um, but that will be probably dropping on Thursday, maybe on Friday. I don't want to give too much spoilers out there. Um, but at the same time, I kind of like, I'm probably going to pre-record it. So it doesn't even worry about it. But yeah. So as the title states, the good and the bad. No, this is not a pun between our thoughts. <laughs> it is very apparent, you know, and Lucas will, you know, clarify this because we're going to kind of summarize our, you know, thoughts of the film in less than a minute. And then we're going to mm -hmm. kind of break it down for the good and the bad from both of our perspectives. And I think that, you know, we can kind of come to some kind of median because some of you guys, you know, you've seen like Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's sitting at like a 75, which is decent at, I think, like maybe 104 critics. Which um, is, and, 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 what Wonder Woman was at, at when it was at uh, 85 on Rotten Tomato? I believe it was right around there. Yeah. But even with that, um, some of you guys have been kind of like, is it something I'm going to like? Is it something I'm not? I mean, you've seen a good amount of social media splurges back and forth. Mm -hmm. But this is a non-spoiler review. So we're not going to go in detail anything specific. We're just no. going to talk around this as a film, how it flows and how it functions. Um, and we'll also kind of make some nudges and comparisons. But we're not going to get too far into that because that is spoiler territory. Yes. So, um, Lucas, um, uh, I'm gonna give you. Well, it's gonna start with me first, huh? I I'll start mm -hmm. then. I'll start. Mm -hmm. I'll start. Mm -hmm. I'll start. Mm -hmm. I'll start. Mm -hmm. So, you guys <laughs> have already known that you know, I personally really enjoyed um, Zack Snyder's Justice League. I mean, I definitely have always wanted him to be able to have the opportunity to fully uh, immerse his vision that he really wanted. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that there was so much controversy behind it. And people have been talking about it for literally years now at this point. And I always wanted an opportunity to see what he fully was going to throw at me. And I think for me, I was able to catch it. I was able to um, really just enjoy it from an entertainment standpoint. Um, it took a lot of, of ambitious decisions in terms of what content was going, um, the way they fleshed out certain character dynamics. Um, specifically a lot of the cringy things that I didn't like in the theatrical, a lot of that was kind of thrown out. And it also surprised me that they added some natural humor into this one that normally Zach just doesn't do. Um, so I, I, for me, it was kind of like, yes, it was a four hour film, but it never felt like to me. And I've seen it at this point, like now three times, um, something that was like, oh man, I did take an intermission break in between. Um, but for me, I did have a really good time with it, and I'm excited to see it again. It's it's surprisingly that I've seen it multiple times, a four-hour film. I don't think I've ever gone through anything, even the Lord of the Rings and like Endgame. I don't go and rewatch something like that. Um, so it is surprising that I've seen it as many times as I have. But yeah, so I've enjoyed it. But we're gonna go and break down the good and the bad. So <laughs> Lucas, you're up. Um, I did not enjoy this at all. Um, it's overly long, overly drawn out. Um, it felt like I was just watching a bunch of Blu-ray deleted scenes or scenes added to other scenes to attempt to make a whole project. Now, the narrative of it is clearly better as it should be being a four hour long movie. Um, some of the plot holes that possibly were in the theater cut that people did not like don't exist because again, it's a four hour long movie. And that is the crux of what makes it better for most, but that's the issue what makes it worse for me is that I can watch it and see that, okay, this scene should have been 10 minutes shorter. This scene should have been five minutes shorter. And I would have preferred if he would have done a version of the film that he would have put out in theaters versus, hey, I have this cut. And I might as well drop it all at once because by dropping it all at once, to me, it suffers tremendously. Um, I don't want to say any more until we get into the film. 
Yeah, so I, I think I think that's a good that's a good little segue because that is a part of one of the things I felt like it was good and bad from a narrative standpoint. So one of the things about the theatrical version was that there was these random uh, reshooted moments to kind of add like a little bit of like bump and like joy to these characters that are from the DC lore, like making them extra quirky, uh, making them like you know extra whatever whether it was like Likeable. aquaman i mean i mean i don't even know if that was the, or the well i guess that was the attempt but it didn't yeah. land it didn't land personally because like the scene with aquaman talking to wonder woman with the lasso around him or like you know ezra miller being all the way off the wall and doing the most for no apparent reason having like batman you know kind of like smiling and gushing and being all this or that it for me, as an actual, you know, understander of these actual characters, it was just weird. And it kind of felt like really unnecessary. But I will say that if, I'm, I'm going to say this, I'm going to word this very carefully. Say, hypothetically speaking, what I guess Warner Brothers initially kind of had Zach doing before they did any of these extra ultra reshooted moments. Um, I think that it could have still flowed just as good. Um, if it was kind of condensed down to maybe three hours or two hours and 45 minutes where, you know, scenes like the Batman moment that happened in very early on was just really seriously taken, but then it still plays out, you know, a certain kind of way with Aquaman and, and even with like the way that they handled Ezra Miller's character, um, with the small little scene, I think it was less than like three minutes. I felt like that was enough. That was a good scene that even though it was cut, I was like, this could have still worked. So I think it is something to say from what Lucas is saying is that it is very possible that this could have been cropped down because there was a couple of different scenes in this that I'm not going to say what they are, but I've listed a few of them. Um, some of them were like um, drawn out song moments. I'm about to say. Um, I told. That kind of, uh, <laughs> that kind of I, I, so for me, as a, I, I am a director, so I do direct things and I, I I actually do create a lot of artistic things. It's really artsy. And I got it, but it, was it, bad. it ultimately was <laughs> unnecessary because there wasn't a poignant place where it was going. Like oh. it, it was it was artistically okay, but it was kind of like it, it, it wasted about maybe 30 seconds. Let me ask a question in different moments. Which song break are you talking about? Well, you know, the, I don't know if we could talk the, about it. The, no, 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 no. Oh, in the beginning, the, opening, the, 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 the first, first big song break. Yeah. Now, okay. I'm going to say this, though. <laughs> it is a very beautiful number. It is very beautiful. It is very unnecessary. But yes. yes. <laughs> it is extremely and I, unnecessary. And yeah. I was like, why am I getting a Disney song break in the middle of a Justice League movie? And it, it made no sense at all for that moment. And that is the issue with a lot. When you... To be fair, this is an assembly cut. For people that don't know what that means, this is when you shoot everything humanly possible and then you take it to a studio and say, hey, here's my assembly cut of the film. And a studio will come back and give you notes and be like, okay, cool, we can remove this, we can remove this, we can remove this. But because of the way this is presented, they didn't care to do that. They just said, put it out. We did we don't really care at this point. Put out your assembly cut of this film and we'll give you the money to finish your assembly cut of a film. These are cuts that every movie has. So let, let's not, again, strictly blame uh, Zack Snyder for this. It's a four and a half hour cut of Black Panther that's out there right now. Every film has an assembly cut. We just normally are accustomed to getting a cut that the studio approves when they take out uh, song breaks or sexy man shot breaks that this movie has in it. So, yeah, again. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna say, so yeah, that was another scene. And okay, so this is because this is us breaking down unnecessary um, sequences. I guess that's we'll, we'll continue to that. There's another sequence with um, Aquaman. Well, we I'll already say. knew when you said sexy man, you already knew who it was um, gonna be. The, it was kind of like visually. <laughs> like honestly, when I rewatched it again, like visually the movie is gorgeous, man. It is it is a very good film. It's shot really good. 
but it was a very unnecessary sequence. And to say this though, Lucas, I think that that character that, you know, the sing the song, why the song was happening, it was kind of like a respect kind of thing because this is a omniscient kind of, uh, you know, person. I, um, I, oh, but, oh, but, oh, I get why they sung it. Okay, okay. I just wanted as, to make sure. As much as I sure. understand why it is not necessary. It, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's, it's not, not necessary. It, it's one of those things where, and I've said this before about Zach, he doesn't know how to self-edit things. So he thought that was a cool moment. By all means, shoot it because you think it's a cool moment. But that's when you have to have someone else come in and say, yeah, that's cool. We're clearly not keeping that. Mm -hmm. And I'll go even further than that to help everybody out here. I'm almost guessing it's about 45 minutes to an hour worth of footage in this movie that's, that Zach never thought would see the light of day. That he shot because he thought these would be some cool moments to have on screen. But even a director that I feel does not know how to edit films, he understands like what an assembly cut is and he understands that, hey, let's get this cool moment on scene. Maybe it'll turn up as a deleted scene. Maybe down the line we can release it. Like that's what you do assembly cuts for to get extra footage down the road that you may want to release. Because I'm pretty sure it's a five-hour version somewhere of The Watchmen out there from Zack Snyder. Yeah, of him doing to, the exact same thing. And, and, to, and to clarify this and be clear, you guys, there, I mean, it was an interview, I think it was like maybe a week and a half ago, Zack said that there's, there's more movie to this. Yeah. Like, whenever this comes out on Blu-ray or 4K or whatever, I'm pretty sure he's probably got like 30 more minutes worth of this film that mm. is probably out there. So just, just, mm, just for mm, clarification. Mm. But, oh, so there's another scene, and again, we're going on some of the stuff that is unnecessary. There's another scene for me that it revolves around the history lesson. And uh. this is the thing about that, okay? There's a sequence with a person going and uncovering something that I was kind of like, oh, okay, this person's reading this. They see it, the writing's there. I was like, okay, this is where it's going to happen. Like, it's going to actually happen, right? But it doesn't. <laughs> And so then later on, it gets spoken to another individual and then it My gets goodness. narrated. You know, and so the issue that I had with the scene, hold on, hold on, hold on. The issue I had with the scene was I was just like, I don't need anybody talking over this. I just really want to see it. And I was kind of like, what would have been dope? And this is me from an editing standpoint. As soon as the person was reading it on the wall, just let it happen. And then by the end of it, they look and they look at the center of the last thing, the shot they see, and then they're terrified because the, the actress, well, she, you know, she sells it. Well, you, you, clearly, it. You, you clearly just gave it away by saying the actress instead of the but actor. It could be anybody. It could be come anybody. On, we don't even on. know what's going on. <laughs> come on now. Come on now. I don't even know what's going okay. on. It was, to me, it was unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. If you're going to give me a flashback of something, please don't narrate it later on in the movie. That's my issue with Man of Steel. When you gave me the Avatar opening and then chose to narrate it minutes later in the film and tell me everything that I just saw. I don't need to be retold what I saw. Show it to me. Let me deal with it. Show a reaction or two and we're fine. Other than that, it again, it's it's one of those things that again is unnecessarily drawn out, and it again it happens too often for me in this for it to even be likable. Because I'm like, okay, I know where this is going. Why am I getting a Christopher Nolan action break in the middle of this movie? Like stuff like that truly irritated me. So I'm gonna say this, and this is this flip gears. This is things that. We didn't get in the theatrical that I felt like added to the film. Um, and I know Lucas is going to disagree with me, but I'm going to mm -hmm. bring it up in general. So um, Cyborg and the Flash in this film, there are things that I don't like about Cyborg and there's things I don't like about the Flash sometimes, but I like them a lot more in this than I did in the theatrical, period. 
because in this one specifically, like they actually give um, Cyborg an actual arc. Um, you get an actual understanding of, you know, who he was before he became Cyborg, um, why he feels the way he feels. Um, it, it very much so kind of feels like a, a, a Frankenstein's monster kind of situation. Um, and that was, from a comic book standpoint, that's one of the things that the early the early version comics of Cyborg, that they really do hit home. And by the end of it, there's a couple of different quotable lines towards the back half of the, of the, the movie that I was kind of like, I really actually felt something for Cyborg. Now, when it came to The Flash, I think that <laughs> Ezra was still as quirky as he was before, but it, 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 it was a little bit more bearable because they gave him moments to breathe. They gave him moments to take a situation seriously and calculate what he should do. And I think that one of the coolest things, and I, I don't know how Lucas cannot agree with this, is that they really do make you understand why and how um, the Flash is one of the most essential members of the Justice League. If you've never seen, you know, the Flash show, if you've never seen the Justice League, they they give you a very clear understanding of why his power set is so essential and pivotal, but at the same that time could be ultimately way more destructive as well. From the way that he moves, and and it was weird because you know how like a lot of people were like picking at how he ran. Oh yeah, um, it was, it was still in, in, in the theatrical, but yeah. you, now you understand the reason why he does it is he's literally throwing. I don't know. I'm going to shut up. I can't speak more than that. But you understand why he runs the way that he actually runs. And I felt like he had easily one of the coolest two different scenes in the movie. Um, But it it was, I don't know, it was just a really dope scene for me. And I really enjoyed it. Not only visually, but I think that emotively, I think it was really, uh, it's really dope. It's really dope. And I think that even with Victor's uh, scene in the third act, as well as something that happens towards the second to the third act, I felt like it was executed and acted really well, personally. But I, I you think could comment all, on those. Though, I think you know all I mean. of that would be great if I didn't already know it. A lot of that is based off of me never seeing anything with Cyborg in it, or never seeing anything with Flash in it, and I don't think we're at a point where we can where we can even attempt to assume people don't know their stories already. Cyborg is everywhere. Everyone knows this story. Young Justice did it much better than this about his anguish about what happened to him because that's what it basically is. It's an anguish moment about what happened to him. I've seen it done better. So this whole time, again, my issue is that possibly you chose the wrong actor to do it because it took an amount of emotion to be emoted from the character that never existed. And he's not good at showing it. And because he's not good at showing it, I literally didn't care about anything that happened. And that and and his even his big moment that happens in the second to third act, it just doesn't come across as powerful because he doesn't do well at showing emotion on his face. And when you don't do that, it's hard for someone to get involved into your character when you struggle with that. Now, as it pertains to the Flash, Ezra Miller is going to be Ezra Miller no matter what. That's something that's never going to change. He is a quirky person. So I don't mind his quirkiness in either one of these cuts because that's who Ezra Miller is. I still found it odd that he ran the way he did. It, it, I really want to talk about why. I, looks, I really want to talk about it, but I can't, I can't say it. I can't say it. Even though it's a reason, that does not make it not look silly. It's one of those things that just looks silly the moment you see it. And as much as you, as much as we want to explain, like, well, this is what the Flash does. This is why he's pivotal, pivotal to the Justice League. We already knew that, though. I think it works better if no one knew who these characters were. Some of these moments could work. The problem is when you have a history of these characters at times i don't need you to show me certain things they do cuz i know what they can do yeah but now when there's... you get to the bigger moments flash's big moment in the film mm-hmm. that's cool because visually that looks amazing to show mm-hmm. but i don't need to see a lot of the other stuff and again 
even with Ezra being quirky at times, it still feels like it doesn't fit in this movie. It feels like they are attempting, or with this film, they were attempting to create a character to compete with another studio and other characters. Like, I didn't need Flash to be overly quirky, even though Ezra is a quirky person, but Ezra can also play a very serious role when necessary. Mm -hmm. And I think if you pull that back some more and didn't attempt to give him the quirky jokes at times mm -hmm. and just say, we're going to play him straight. Like, this kid clearly has an emotional story that can be touched upon pretty easily with Flash. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on that emotional story and the impact of him instead of him kind of coming off the same way Lex Luthor comes off in BBS of that just weird quirkiness at times. Yeah, see, that's what I was saying, though. Like, in the theatrical, it was, bro, dare I say, it was unbearable, bro. Because, like, when they got to the third act of that, I was done with his character. I was kind of like, I know Ezra can act. I know, he, I know he's better than this. But at least in this one, it was kind of like, they pulled it back a lot. And I think that, I mean, again, this, this is hard to say they pulled it back is because this is what Zach shot initially. It's just, they were like, oh, we're going to up the quirkiness. And I don't know why, you know, WB thought that that was a good idea, but it didn't work for me. It didn't it's, land for it's me. It's because, because uh, at that point, I say you get to the big issue, the difference between this one in a the theater cut, and the reason why, not even a difference, the reason why, it's pretty simple here. This is not a joyful movie in any stretch of the imagination. This is not a movie families would go see. This is not a movie kids would go see. This is this is not that type of movie. And in the end, it had been better, and I said it when they released it, it had been better if you just threw away Zach's entire movie and reshot it with Josh. Just reshoot a whole movie. Because you but, brought in a director to correct the obvious issues you had with this movie, which was this movie is way too serious. I, to me, but, it has no see, humor. It has no humor moments in it. Everything about this movie is serious. And at that point, you have lost kid audiences, PG-13 audience. You lost anybody under the age of 18 that wants a extremely serious, non-human humor field film and if that's what you wanted if, if you wanted something different throw this whole movie away and start over so but I, we understand why it did happen so but i we mean know why. i mean it's, see that's that's a for me that's a negative and a positive for this one because i mean i well i'm gonna say this i disagree i think that there are some random naturally funny moments like there's like small little snippet conversations that are had it just on just naturally funny. Like, I mean, whether it's Alfred, whether it is conversations with Wonder Woman, whether it's, you know, Barry and, and Victor. I mean, I feel like there's just normal, natural, funny moments. But for me, when you start to, I mean, I, I would agree with you if the scenes that he chose to add in the theatrical were laughable or were natural like either way like they just don't but, work no no like, that's whatever. the problem though is when you're starting from a dark place you can't pull back and then bring in humor so throw away the whole movie you can't bring in humor at a dark place that's just not gonna happen yeah but another... you, have to, you literally have to start from a place that's more lighthearted, mm -hmm. and you can go dark then and then bring back but you can't go super dark and then it attempt to inject humor in it. Let's, let's see. That's, that's so weird because I don't know. I feel like this one, out of all the ones that Zach has done, for me, had the most humor in it. And I don't know if that's me personally feel that way, but I, I feel like it has more humor. Than I didn't. Man I didn't even Steel. crack a smile once. Oh, Man of Steel has no humor. No, that's what I'm saying. I, I think that this one has the most levity. And the most natural stuff. See, but again, I, well, I don't want to harp on over it. But but yeah, yeah I, I just none of the none of his movies have humor. They're all extremely dark, and that was the mistake of attempting to bring in someone to lighten up, trash, and start over. You can, you did a, you did a much better job at doing that. And so, and so this is another thing. Let me pull it up really quick. So I, for one. <laughs> 
<laughs> as far as the visuals, now again, this I guess this goes back to what you're saying. On top of them trying to add in quirky humor, they did a rush job. They released that thing in 2017 when they really, either way, should have released it in 2018 and gave it more time to work on the visual effects. Um, I never liked the design of Stephen Wolf, um, but that's not even the biggest thing for me is the look of Henry Cavill Superman. It was the random just, I mean, we, we talked about, I think when you were talking about some of the things you didn't like the visual effects. I only had one scene that I felt like the visual effects were not good in in the in the in the Zack Snyder's Justice League, but in the theatrical, I had them throughout throughout the entire film, and I felt like that was a partly because it was a rush job. But I do like the new design of Stephen Wolf over the whatever design we got from right here, um, because it kind of really did feel like an alien and origin situation. The other thing about this film is that. The theatrical made no mention whatsoever of any outside presence like Dark Side or anything in between. And this film has enough time to really breathe and show you, I guess, what Zach was initially trying to do. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, as a critic, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to, mm. to go and assess where this was really trying to go. <laughs> um, the fan and the comic book lover in me, I knew everything that was going on. And that's why I said, and I said this to Lucas when we got done looking at the movie, that this is a legitimate graphic novel come to life. And a part of the reason I think that why Lucas doesn't like Endgame, like Endgame is, I mean, Endgame and Infinity War in certain respects, kind of like, it's just like a, a whole <laughs> thrown at you straight up. And I felt like they went cosmic with it in a way that I was very surprised and very pleased by. Whether it was the designs of Dark Side, whether it was the designs of Stephen Wolf, whether it was like this feeling of a alien presence um, that was not only ancient, but unlike anything that you know the DC universe had ever kind of tried to even touch before. Uh, from a from a uh, a theatrical or a cinematic live action standpoint. We all of us have seen the cartoons. All of us yep. have seen um the animated films that are, you know, I mean, mostly superior than the the DCU in general anyway. Um, but this was the first time seeing it live action. And for me as a comic book fan versus me as a critic, it's it's a hard nudge for me because it's kind of like mm. how much of this am I looking at this as a comic book movie? And how much am I looking at this as <laughs> a serious movie? Like that's that's what I'm trying to say. Like uh -huh. as, as, as a comic book movie, the whole point of me is the disbelief and just enjoying <laughs> the immersive process of it. The mm -hmm. critic in me is to kind of break down the things like we've been doing. Like the first what 12 minutes of this. We broke down things that were unnecessary. We deciphered certain things that hurt the pacing. It could have also been tempered to a degree that would have made it breathe a little bit easier as well. But again, we're talking about a comic book movie. Um, I think mm. that Lucas had brought this up multiple times before that uh, Zach makes serious comic book movies. <laughs> um, and that is... A contradiction into itself. It, 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 it can potentially contradict your perspective on what you're watching. Because if you're a DC fan that love like these dark characters that are from the comics, then you're kind of like, okay, I'm immersed in moments, you know, or you completely are just in love and elated by what you're seeing. Just like you're just being captivated by what you're actually seeing. Much to what I'm even commenting about just the visual. Because this is, is it necessary? No. Is it look better? Yes. <laughs> and it's kind of like... It looks like he I... has little horns all over his body. Yeah. <laughs> his armor literally let, let moved me... throughout here's the, the thing. entire here. film. But here's the thing. If, if you're going to do certain characters, and this is one thing I give credit to that other studio for at least attempting to do. When you do these big characters, it's much better just to take their exact armor from the comic books and put it on the film. Don't give me your interpretation of it. That whatever their exact armor is from the comics, put it on them. But well, the issue would be their, I don't believe their actual armor or said costumes from it 
plays to Zach's color palette, which is very moody. So he needed it to look more moody and menacing than it necessarily needed to be. As it pertains to this gentleman right here, Mr. Darkseid, which I know from all the cartoons because I see him all the time in them. Him being interjected in this movie was fine. Him becoming a bigger force is what hurts it. It's it's kind of, and I told Sam this after we saw it, I said it kind of reminded me of when King the Conqueror uh, was in Gardens of the Galaxy and um, if you ever watch like some of the documentaries of that being made and how they said we tried extremely hard while putting Thanos in it, not to have him overshadow the actual villain of the film. In turn, with Steppenwolf here, he is relegated to a uh, henchman in the film. So at that point, I don't particularly care what happens to the henchman. I need to know more about the main villain. And that's the, that's the risk you run by attempting to overload your film with way too much stuff at a time. You could have just done a very simple scene with the motives being explained by the guy who's really controlling the show and yet having the villain, the antagonist of the film, then do everything else. But they chose not to go that route with it because this was set up to be a much big, bigger world building film than anything else. Yeah, I mean, Zach, he, he said it like he he planned this out. And I mean, I don't know if you know the whole story, Lucas, but he planned this. It was going to oh, be, you know, you know, I know the, on, the second <laughs> one, a third one. Mm. And then after that, he even said that it was going to be naturally rebooted. Like he said this in the recent interview that after the point that this was it, then he was like, they were going to progress to a whole new everything else. Or they were going to do a flashpoint and kind of put them into a whole different spectrum of the universe. And to me, I'm kind of just like, I'm, I'm torn with that. I'm torn with that aspect of it because if that was the case, then what did, what did it matter? Because it's like Nolan, Nolan definitely did the same exact thing. At this point that Nolan was done, it was kind of like, okay, he kind of alluded it. He was thinking about a, a Superman situation and then it, what, he wasn't going to do it himself. And then he kind of just passed it on to mm -hmm. random different people. And then eventually it ended up on Zach's plate and then, of course, they ended up doing it. But I'm saying that if after a second movie and third then a movie, third one and then reboot you reboot it, then, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it doesn't – because what I'm, what, I'm, 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 what I'm getting at here is that, Lucas, is that if in this film – and technically, we're not spoiling anything. No, We've seen the not, trailers yeah, at this point. We're not point. spoiling anything at this point. No. Um, you know the dark side is in this. Hopefully you temper your expectations of how much he's in it <laughs> because the trailers would lead you to believe a completely. And I, 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 I oh my gosh, I'm not going to go yeah, there. Yeah, don't, nope, don't say I'm not going to go there. Just I'm not leave go it there. at that. Don't even, don't even lead more into, matter of fact, let me just steal it from you here. No, no, no. Cause you were about to go off on a tangent that was going to tell way more than you needed to tell. Anyway. It's simple here. The whole thing is if you're going to get to a third movie and reboot it, you're almost telling, here's it. It's a thing about moving too fast. And it's something that is the issue with these movies with Zach is that they move way too fast. We jump way too fast into Batman and Superman. Then we turn around and jumped too fast into Justice League. And now, just off of what he's told us, you are going to jump super fast into ending this and then immediately rebooting it. So that means this universe was set to reboot in 10 movies. That's yeah. crazy. Well, well, so so I so this is the thing. I wonder about rebooting or flashpointing, meaning that the whatever yeah. whatever his universe was, these characters were gonna just kind of progress into a different natural way. I don't necessarily think they're gonna be completely rebooted. I think that they were just gonna be whatever, whatever they were gonna go and be at that point. Pigo, let me ask a question then. Do you think it contradicts what Patty has already said about Wonder Woman? Uh, what, Wonder Woman 3 or Wonder Woman... Uh, Wonder Woman in general. One. She said that she signed on to do a trilogy. Her story was three. That's it. No, because it doesn't contradict because this will be, the third movie will be present day. The other no, no, but what I mean is that if, if, if that's it mm -hmm. and she moves on, do you think Gal would have stayed 
as they flashpointed her to a different place, or would they had recast a different person as Wonder Woman? Do you want my honest opinion? Oh, I can get I I know what my answer would be, but I'm glad to hear yours. I know what my answer would be off this. This is the easy one for me. I mean, I I mean, <laughs> there I, I don't think that they would continue down that route. That's what I'm going to say. I think that they would have gone a completely different route altogether. Who Gal and them or no Warner Brothers? Or I'm sorry, Warner Media, AT and T. Whatever it is now. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. You think they would have just fired everybody? Is that what you're trying to say? I think that they would have progressed past <laughs> and did something completely different. Well, after well, that trilogy ended, unless there was reasoning. Kind of like, you know, when um, with uh, Marvel, with Thor, right? At the, end of, at the end of the second one, and then they were like, all right, we got a third one. And then this is, you know, we're going to got a fourth one. And, but it's crazy because the third one hit so well that now it's kind of like, oh, man, we got to keep this guy, you know. But it was like up until the second one, everybody was like, uh, I don't know. But the third one was so well received. And I think that honestly, at the, even in this movie, and I can say this even in this movie, that they paint Wonder Woman to be so pivotal. Even Zach does it. Even Zach does it in this one because... Because of who she is. I can't say much more than that. But if you if you go in connection to certain things that happen and something we talked about earlier in this and where this ends up, yeah, she I, is very essential I'm to the Sam DCU. Because I'm not allowed to talk about Wonder Woman because it will lead me to talking about something that I'm not allowed to talk about in this discussion. Let's just say I was a tad bit disappointed with the direction they took Wonder Woman in, in this film. And that just comes off of me talking to comic book people about things. And I'm like, ah, you're a thousand percent right about that. But that is something you'll see and you'll judge on your own. And hopefully you'll understand what I mean by that. Yeah. Oh, we're going off on tangents. I'm sorry. I didn't even yeah. finish off yeah. about uh, <laughs> this. So, I mean, this is the armor of Stephen Wolf from the comics. And there is a huge something there in front of her. Um, but as far as the look, how many of different it, how many different armors do we have in the comics? Too many. I'm about too to say, many. what is the what is the considered the definite version of step? Because that's not the definite version of Steppenwolf. I know it's not. This this is the current version. Uh, I'm gonna try to pull one up. It 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 looks terrible. I can tell you that much. The current version does not. I mean, well, the old original version does not. This is the old school joint right here. This is the old school joint. Um, and I believe that's Stephen Wolf over to the right. With the uh, monkey cape on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So the, the key part, especially in comics, and what I have learned is to find a definite version of that person. Kind of what the other company did with their big bads. It's finding definite versions of them and doing it instead of attempting to create and see, um, I mean, that's, this that. is a hard aesthetic right here, though, Lucas. Like, I mean, I, he I looks, don't know. He looks like something from Alien vs. Predator. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, if he went that route, I think it would have been a bad <laughs> situation, too. Anyway, anyway, so this is, a, this is before I lose my train of thought with this. For me, personally, I felt like, and you disagreed, but I'm going to have to pull you, I'm going to ring you in on it. Um, I'm going to try to pull up my notes really quick. I felt like the fight scenes with Wonder Woman in this film were about as intense. Well, I mean, I'm not going to say as intense. Well, I'm a, you not, mean... not going to say intense. <laughs> there were a lot more better fight scenes in this than 84. Oh, and I not... felt like when I think about like Wonder Woman, the first one, it felt like the same exact character. What I mean by that, as far as her as an actual warrior. Now, 84 didn't merit or require her to be a warrior. That's one of the issues I had with it. But in this one, she had to step up and be that same Wonder Woman from Wonder Woman 1 that we saw, as well as the BVS version that we initially saw. And I actually really dug it. I loved all her action scenes. I felt like they did more with her in this one um, that I did not expect. 
Um, now, as far as the route that her character goes, mm, I am I very curious. Way more talking about that part well, than so, the action scenes. So this is the thing about that. And I know what you're talking about. Mm. That is a... F- we got to talk about it offline. <laughs> because, I already knew you could talk about it. That's why I said I'm not talking about it. I because, can't talk about it. You can't talk about it because it would go into the movie. Because I don't think that... I think that that was a warning. I don't think that that's where that's going. Mm. I, don't, I don't think it's where it's going at all. I think it's more it's so a, a warning. It was a couple of scenes I had issues with. And amazingly, what happens is 84 highlights another moment in this movie that I did not like. Because 84 is supposed to be Wonder Woman 20 years or 17 years before this movie. Well, you know, you And we just we discover that, you know, Wonder Woman can do things in '84, and then I have questions why certain things don't happen in this movie. But you, but, but see now, Lucas. Now look, you can't do that because you know for a fact he didn't reshoot any films with Gal Gadot. This is the hey, film that he initially hey, had hey, in 2017. But, but even but in 2017, but even in 2017, I would have had questions about certain things. But he never that that the character never did that in either one of the films. So you can't. I'm sorry. You can't. You can't add that in there. I'm sorry. Yes, that's, you can. That's a yes, you can. How? Yes, you, can. How do you, do because, you know Look why? You, you know why? You, you know why? Because yeah. because in all honesty, Zach is still a producer on '84. Yeah. So but you kind of knew. Uh-uh, but that hold up. Hold up. Now that means you still kind of knew the direction that this character was going in. Mm-mm. Uh-huh. Who, how would he know? So, Sam? I'm gonna I'm disagree like that because how would he not know that, Sam? When even when he was talking to Patty about mm-hmm. Wonder Woman one, he let her do her thing. He was just a producer. The decisions that they made in Wonder Woman one contradict even BBS. But then, but then you know then that creates even a bigger issue because then that means that you were just throwing characters to the wind and did not have overall discussions about where these characters should and would go following this. But, but he's not at that time, even then, he wasn't a Kevin Feige. He, all he was was just a producer. He talked with all of them about what he was doing, where he wanted it to go, but he gave them free reign to do whatever they want to. You even can with James Wan and think about it though. You can give people free reign to do what you want, but 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 it would have to be discussions about hey, these are the natural progressions of these characters, these are where these characters are going. Yes, yeah. you can do your own film, but no, mm-hmm. but no. If we're going to keep her in the past, mm-hmm. which that was already known, that it was always going to be in the past for the second film. Yeah. Hey, these are the things that we are going to have to eventually discuss with this character. Mm-hmm. So if we have her do certain actions in this movie that's supposed to be in the future and we show in the past that she can do these things, it creates a conflict. Instead of creating that conflict, how about we have her do certain things in this movie? And that's what I mean by if if you're not doing that, that means none of this was properly planned out. Because it couldn't be properly planned out. And I mean at the whole spectrum of everyone, everyone involved in DC films. None of this was planned out properly, but then that yeah. points back we, to we knew that though. But no, no, but then that. it but then it points back to the biggest issue. All of this is rushed. We yeah, I mean we we've agreed on that. <laughs> we we we've been long pissed agreed on that. All this was some of the things that were happening were just thrown. And they, and then they were kind of like, we'll see where the chips lie. And they they've been reactive to that for a long extended amount of time. And so I'm saying all that to say that what we saw in this film <laughs> because the- even even my main guy, my uh uh, fish man again without going Aquaman. into detail, yes. Without okay. going, I, I'm trying to be conspicuous, but I called him fish man. But besides going into detail, he has a scene in this movie. And the moment I see the scene in the movie, I'm like, wait a minute, he's not where I think he is because that was a huge moment in his movie. Okay, so like, okay, so you know that isn't true, right? Which one? The moment that you're talking about is not that actual place. That was just a statue. Just so you just no, 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 no. clear it up. But when he's there, right, 
mm-hmm. and, the, and the conversation he has. Yeah. Wasn't that conversation part of a bigger picture of the movie? I know what you're saying, but no, they, so basically he was saying that I, well, well, well the character he's interacting with said that like, you're, you're always all over the place. Well, why is this the place that you feel like you're the most at home? And he was like, mm-hmm. this is peaceful to me. Mm-hmm. But what it does, it leaves you but then he foreshadowing says, for what happens in but then he said, later on. No, then he says something else that they play way more like it's revealed to him in Aquaman. Well, you know, you bro, you knew what happened with that. You knew that Zach was <laughs> gone. You look, that's that ain't a, got nothing to do with that. Yeah, that's but the then, planning thing. I'm but then about. that's but that's what I mean by it. It's none of this seemed fully planned out the way it needed to be. Yeah. Fact, and, and what I mean by that, people, what I mean, it's hard for us. We're, we're talking around this, you guys. We are we're, we're being very careful. But what I mean by that is, and I only say it to, to, to point out one thing. A lot of people think that, or think eventually that this will lead somewhere else. They've really shown you that that's not going to be the case ever. And it's like they made the mistake to me of retconning a lot of things in this movie and then releasing this movie without so, telling so- people up front, without telling people up front. And this is about a communication error without being a thousand percent clear up front, even though they kind of did it. They had an exec say something about it, but still there are people who don't understand and they're not really clear that this is it. And I think that's a studio issue, not a Zach issue, not an actor wow. issue. It's a studio issue. Yeah. Come out and tell people, by the way, we're not doing anything else with this and, yeah. and be blunt about it. Because at times you have to be blunt with people. You can't yeah. beat around the bush. Yeah, so I, I will say this, Lucas, and I know you can say this from a, a subjective standpoint, and I know I know how you feel about it, but <laughs> speaking to those people, right, those people that you're describing right now, say in the next two weeks they are really, you know, wanting to see where this goes like after this film, do you think that they're merited to have that maybe on the HBO Max situation? No, whether it happens or not, I mean, it, it, you already we already know what you think, but I'm saying that yeah. are they merited to feel that way based on you seeing the film? And again, I, I, it goes back to the reason why I'm saying all this, and I mean, like, this is good or bad, but we're going into a gray area right now, you guys, so mm. just bear with us. <laughs> hold on, hold on to your bridges because for me. Honestly, the reason why I can keep watching this again and again isn't necessarily like the connective tissues to all these other like other movies. It's more so like I'm finally getting to see this on a live action scale, even if it's on a limited level. Um, I'm really getting a a great immersive, um, entertaining experience. Even though, like, again, to all your points, to all the things that we talked about, all the different flaws, I really am just enjoying the ride. And I feel like there are other people that are also equally enjoying the ride. And so that's why I was asking, do you feel like they're merited in feeling that way? No. Go ahead, elaborate. You mean the people? Of course. The people. The people, the people yeah, are, that's, what, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking people about. People are merited to feel any way you want to. This is not a situation where your feelings should be checked by anyone. If this is what you wanted, that's a great thing. You got it. Rejoice in it. But my issue always becomes when you think it's going to expand to something else. That's when it comes beyond the responsibility of the people and it goes to responsibility of the studio. studio. Like the people, if if this is what you want, Sam has, to me, painted the perfect picture here. He's at a conflict with himself as a film critic versus a comic book fan because off record, and eventually I'm going to ask, strictly as a critic what he thinks about it, but I'm not going to ask him that here. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a completely different answer if I say strip away all your comic feelings and break this down as a film. It's not going to be the same thing for him because he understands what that means. But for the people who are going to see this movie and want to see this movie, no, your enjoyment is the most important thing here. If this is what you want to see, great. My issue is that right now, even though they've said it 
and all the actions they've done has told you this is going to be it. You need to eventually come out and either be clear with people this is going to be it or saying, eh, maybe we'll think about doing something else down the line. But then you'll be lying. In all honesty, you'll be lying. You you came up front at the height of this movie coming out and then chose to announce three weeks before the release that you were rebooting Superman. That wasn't like per chance type news. That was kill your hope type of news. Then so, two weeks before this movie come out, you announce your own personal flashpoint is about to go into production. You did it again. You're out here killing hope while not saying it. Instead, you had an anonymous exec say, this is a cul-de-sac leading to nowhere. Instead of someone coming out that's in relation with Warner Media or AT&T and saying, hey, this is it. This is a one-off. You all wanted this. We're going to give it to you. But at this point, this is the end of anything to do with Zack Snyder and the DC Universe. Be honest about it. So, and this is another thing I do want to comment about that. The casting of Iris West. Like, the timing of the casting of Iris West. I had so many people, and you guys in the chat, y'all can, you know, comment and talk to me about it off, off offline because I'll be doing a spoiler review and everything anyway. Um, where they were like, yo, this is so crazy. Like, Kirstie Clemens, like, they're casting her as Iris West? Like, does that mean anything good like why why would they do that like what's going on and it's like you you when you do that <laughs> you give people <laughs> hope for something more because honestly i kind of was like okay there's no way they can do this because if they do this then you're i mean i, I don't i don't but as we're as we're still flash yeah but that in the theatrical <laughs> that's canon in the theatrical that's canon she was never in the film so in other words so, but here's the weird part. The point you announced it, that we recasted her and she was never in the movie in the first place, that's a hint also. But they didn't recast her. They brought her back. <laughs> Say it again with me, Sam. Exactly. Exactly. So why would you have to announce it? They announced it that way for a reason. They, they were probably like, we like their chemistry together. We're not going to continue that storyline, but we'll bring her back for sure. Because everyone knows it was an iffy thing if they were going to bring Ezra back. And then they decided to lock on to bringing him back. But guess who's not coming back? What? Three other ones aren't coming back? Except for, one. well, one in a Flashpoint movie. Where they uh, will probably erase him in the movie, but then that'll be it. Wait, who? Who are you talking about? Batman. Oh yeah, I mean Ben's so ben, yeah, ben, yeah. And then, then so they're gonna erase him. I'm gonna say this. I think <laughs> I think that they're gonna put Gal in there. They're gonna I think they're gonna put they, everyone in they're there. They're gonna put Henry in there, they're gonna put everybody except for Ray in there. And I, I think that they're gonna bring some well, no, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I don't, think like, they're gonna I, do, I don't know if I can I trust think, Warner Brothers. <laughs> I don't think Henry would be in it because I don't think Henry wants to revisit it. I don't know. I, 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 I don't, and I not meaning with that. not meaning wanting to revisit Superman. He would love to be Superman again, but he understands what that means. He understands that I'm only putting you in here to get rid of you. And let's be real here. Warner Brothers still has very bad feelings towards Henry right now. And everyone knows it. You're talking about the... Um... Shazam. Oh, I thought it was about the money thing. No, it's Shazam. They have very bad feelings towards him for Shazam. Because I mean, that was supposed to be a big cameo for them to have but, him in that movie. And when he decided to play hardball for more money at that time, they were like, okay. Wait, so that wasn't a scheduling issue for that, though? No. Because at the time, he was issue. doing The Witcher and... Uh... It, was a, it was a money issue. And Henry did... But like his exec did have his... Uh, Danny Garcia? I don't think she had any issue saying that it was clear Henry wanted more money. Oh... Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. So that then, was that's what, yeah, then, yeah, the money thing. Yeah, makes yeah, yeah. it even worse of why they probably won't put Henry in it. No need Superman. I have Supergirl in it already. Like I already have Supergirl in it. I can I can do without Superman. Or matter of fact, no, I can do without that Superman. 
Because if they cast a new Superman soon, he'll be in Flashpoint. Oh, Michael B. Jordan. I'm not going to lie here. Michael B. Jordan will be in Flashpoint when they cast him as Superman. I don't I don't think they're going to go with him, man. <laughs> I, I mean, that's not shade. I'm just saying I don't think they're going to go. I don't. I really don't think they're actually going to go with Michael. Um, I don't know who they're going to go with, but... Um, but I again, just... that's just off on a tangent on, to me, not being up front that this isn't going to continue. Because, and again, this is not a spoiler alert because Zach already said it. This movie leaves you with a huge cliffhanger. Yeah, I will be talking about that. <laughs> it leaves you with a huge cliffhanger. Spoiler review. Um, and because it leaves you with that cliffhanger, it's going to lead people to thinking they're going to get more. And that's when we have to be bluntly honest here. We know why the Snyder, we did a video l- last year about why the Snyder Cut was being made. Me and you did it. No, oh, yeah, yeah. We, we were live. We did, yeah, like that. yeah, we did it. Why the Snyder Cut was being made. I said then it cost $70 million to finish a film. It costs a hell of a lot more to get a brand new type of project on a streaming service. HBO Max needed views. They needed subscribers and they dropped it and say, we're going to do the Snyder Cut. Then a pandemic hits and they announced they're dropping their whole slate on HBO Max and they pushed this thing to the back burner so fast. Mm. It went from being this mega event that me and Sam, here's the thing, I was hyped when it was a mega event because I said that makes sense. Like you give them segments and then you can hype it out and stretch it out. And then magically they decided, even though it's broken up into chapters, to drop it at all at one time. That again shows you how much they don't care about this project. So no, they're not going to want to give you more because at that point, that means I'm starting from scratch if I give you more. If you think because of a pandemic, they did a $70 million project to finish it, that they're going to then turn around and dump another $300 million into it for a sequel? No. They're going to move on from it and say, hey, we gave you what you wanted. Now we're going to reset it with our own Flashpoint. We recast it Superman already. We're going to find a way because Robert Pattinson somehow, some way is going to end up in Flashpoint. And I think that's one of the secrets they're holding out is he's going to end up in Flashpoint. And I almost 100 percent sure that uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix is going to end up as Joker in there somehow, some way. Hey, look, I'm going to say this on record. If you give me a Joaquin Phoenix and Robert Robert Pattinson Pattinson anything, I look... (laughs) I would do like this. <laughs> and this this is not shade or anything to Zach or anybody else. I'm just saying specifically as a fan of Batman, just like I'm a fan of Superman, I accept all incarnations. I am for it. If you give me Joaquin Phoenix and Rob Pattinson, straight up, like I will lose it. I, I think that's I think I, I I've always thought that that was their goal. Is that hey, we're gonna reset this thing. And we're going to dump as many people in Flashpoint as we can. Like, one thing Andy is really good at, who is the director of Flashpoint, is dealing with a huge cast. He is. So if you just dump all these people in there, give them moments that are necessary, including including possibly, possibly bringing in a Batman Beyond, the goal is to make you forget that this movie and anything before it came out. The Flash is the ultimate reset for them. And to be fair, you guys, just so we, we can make this clear, Zach is okay with that. Like, Zach... He signed Zach his deal said, with Netflix. He's Zach, fine. I mean, not even, not even just that, but, like, I'm saying that he's got an opportunity not only to finish this, for, for whatever you feel about it or not, Um, like, he knew where he was taking this story to go. And for me, as a person that did like this film and really appreciated what this film did uh, for the comic book lover in me and just the you know enthusiast in me, um, he 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 is okay. If 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 that did happen, I think that he would be like, you know what, like we left a mark with this one way or another. Um, but one thing I did want to bring up to you, Lucas, and I'm curious how how you going to feel about it. So mm-hmm. you said a statement. I don't know. I ain't, I ain't gonna quote you on a statement. I'm gonna say this. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of fights and moments in this one that I kind of was like. You said you were really bored, 
But I wasn't. And so I actually, I mean, I'm gonna name off some of the fights. Like there's a fight with the Parademons and Steppenwolf. There's a fight at the Mascara. There's a fight in the Atlantis. Like, honestly, for every single chapter, there was actually a fight going on. Mm -hmm. On top of moments between, you know, dynamic action -y moments that were actually happening, um, that were buffering in between. There was never a moment for me that I didn't feel like, you know, oh, there's nothing really happening. Now, I do say this, and we talked about this. There were some very <laughs> unnecessary mm -hmm. moments in between that kind of, could, if, if a person isn't paying attention, they could be dragged along. There, there you go. And you answered think, your own question. No, I'm just asking you, but you said it was boring, but I was a lot I was, of action I, in there. I was, see, but to me, action into itself doesn't equal excitement. It, it sometimes I, could, though. I've seen it plenty. Of, I, I please, I've seen plenty of movies that are have action from start to finish, and they were extremely boring. True. Like, well, uh, oh, oh, don't you say it because there's mm. a person we love. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. I knew, I knew, it. I knew it was going to tell me. Look, he's going to be watching this and I know you're going to say it. So, no. Hey, hey. I understand what you're trying to say. Okay. Th that's it. That's my whole point of it. Okay. And, some of, okay. and keep in mind, it's better to say, and again, it's not spoiling anything. Uh, some of the action beats or majority of the action beats are extended scenes. Well, no. So, okay. So I'm, gonna say, said, I'm gonna say this. I'm mm, gonna say this because mm. this this is where this gets hard. Yes. This film <laughs> it is an extended version. What? what? <laughs> it's good to say. It's no, fine no, so, to say no, no, it. No, no, it's no, no, fine no, no, no. to say it. It's an extended so, so, version. So no, I'm gonna say this. All of the action scenes. I think the way that Zach shot them, except for one, that I'm not gonna bring up. All the rest of them were exactly the way that he wanted those action scenes to actually go. I think he all the different action moments. I think were exactly how he wanted them to go. Yes, but for time, Josh cut a lot of them, and and, and it kind of just got flushed out, or some of them just got completely forgotten. Like there's this flash scene. No, I'm sorry. Every flash scene in this yeah, film is scenes, not in the theatrical whatsoever. Every action but, scene with but the big cyborg action, were gone. The, the big action beats. That's all I'm gonna say. Because if I say any more, it's gonna spoil something. But the big action beats of this film versus the big action beats of the theatrical cut. Um not and not comparing them to. I'm trying okay, my best okay. not to say what I want to say, but let's just say I was bored with them because I knew where I were why where it was going. Yeah, and, and every this, 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 this is the thing. This goes back to what we talked about before. Cause now this is just us discussing his stuff. Now mm -hmm. we talked a long time ago, me and Lucas, about the possibilities of what this movie was going to be. Mm -hmm. And Lucas said to me, "I swear, fam, if this starts and ends the same exact way, then mm. what the heck is the point of this movie?" And at that point, that Lucas said that to me, I was kind of like, "Oh, he's he's. I don't know how this is going to go." And so <laughs> we got started the movie. And I was like, oh, okay, this is different. Okay, cool. And then I was like, oh, crap. Lucas is gonna... mm -hmm. <laughs> Either Lucas is sleeping, drinking, or not enjoying himself right now. Or I was not. Above. I was drinking and not enjoying myself. And so but... I, I, I know Lucas. And then again, this I can't speak for everybody. I knew we, me and Lucas had an in-depth conversation about what could be. Because we had five years to hypothesize what it could be. Mm -hmm. So... I knew how he was gonna feel, and he probably he pre I'm pretty sure he knew how I was gonna end up feeling. Oh, a hundred percent. So I said it before we even watched the movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I, I'll say this: that I can agree to disagree with everything you're saying, especially when it comes with the action parts, because yeah, it's just it's weird because I do think that all the action beats. Zach wanted. I think that some of the other stuff, I think now, that those would have been deleted scenes. But I'll say this though. Mm -hmm. Cyborgs, all the cyborg stuff, say for the very last scene. The horrible, horrible ending of this movie. That's I'm not only, gonna say what it is. No, that's the only scene that the I last, don't like the VFX for at all. My god, I do horrible. not the VFX was, for that scene. No, 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 no. Let's say this. I, Let's just say this. The VFX 
for the last two scenes of this movie are horrible. It's only one. Mm -mm, think about it. Oh, you a jerk. You a jerk. <laughs> hey, look, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Those two scenes are what he wanted to do. And <sighs> I'm not going to say anything more than that because that's if what I said anything million, more. That's what, that's what $70 million went to, Sam. I don't think so. That's what I, I don't think, think so. <laughs> because this, this is what I really think. We know for a fact it was an assembly cut, right? So we mm -hmm. knew that all the principal photography was done. I think that all the the history lesson, the fights, all the stuff that was with the natural mm -hmm. whole bulk of it, the VFX was where all the money went. That extra stuff, I don't, I don't, I don't think. God, it was bad. I don't think. I don't think it was uh, bad. It I don't was think, bad. It was bad. And so, without going into detail, Sam, without going into any detail, what scenes we are talking about here. From your critic cat, from the marketing standpoint that you saw beforehand, how upset will people be for those last two scenes? So, uh, from a critical perspective and marketing, how upset uh, will people be? Why you do that? Why you had to sit there and put me on the <laughs> air chair like that? Okay, I'm gonna say this, you guys. Y'all pay attention to me real carefully. Hear me, hear me out. They would have been better off only doing one trailer. And that's it. Yes. Because all these mm -hmm. teasers, all these, especially the last trailer and the last TV spot, I really, I dare I say I'm pissed that they yeah. came out and that Warner Brothers or Warner Media or whoever the heck allowed mm -hmm. it to come out mm -hmm. because <laughs> they, they cripple a big part of the ending um, of this film. Not even the ending, like the, the pivotal. Anyway, yes, shut, that's what I'm up. talking about. I'm going to shut up. But that's but, not even the scenes I'm talking about. You know what scenes I was talking about. Yeah. Mm. I think that people's expectations will get killed. and Are, are, are going to be hurt. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, this goes and harpens back to what you were talking about. About the Kovacak situation. Yeah. Because this, regardless of what it looks like, the implications behind what's really happening, either people are going to be pissed about the fact of how much of it they got, or they're going to be pissed about, you better give me more. You better show me where the flip this is going, because now what does this mean? So yep. I think that they're going to be upset on two different levels. Either one, it, it was like, man, daggone, I already knew this was going to happen. What, what the heck is this? And two... Wait, we where are we going with this now? Because because, because there's a scene that happened in VVS. Would you would you agree without going into any details? So don't say BVS because then you're gonna give something away, sir. I'm letting you know you're gonna give it away, and it's not it's not hard to give it away. But would you say that <clears throat> that second to last scene is kind of what a lot of people wanted to see this cut for? Because even during the movie, without saying what it was. I thought I fell asleep and missed it. And I thought that because that was the scene. That setup is what a lot of people are looking forward to seeing. And I'm it plays like an end credit scene. I'm going to say this because Zach has said it, so I can say it. The scene that we're talking about, that is... <laughs> This is gonna mess I don't know. Don't say it because I don't want to ruin it for people. Let them see it and let them see it on their own. And that's me saying. No, no, no I'm not. I'm not gonna. It. I'm not gonna say anything about. It. I'm just saying that the scene that we're talking. But I said about, the place. I said the. I said the placement of the scene. That's why I said don't say it. Well, well, the, the placement of it or not, whatever's <laughs> happening in that is what <laughs> is what the next movie is supposed to be about. That's all I'm gonna say. Like he's already said that, and he even said it's not gonna happen. But but I will agree with you, Lucas. Absolutely, that. The way that it's placed, the way that the way that it's uh, there, I I didn't have that much of an issue with it because I was already honestly. If the movie had ended, it should have ended at the point <laughs> that it just right there. I think it would have been just fine with me. Period. What it did was I was like, ah, oh, flip. We get to see two, um, two crappy scenes after what should have been the end of the movie. 
Well, I mean, not even. I mean, so I mean, regardless of the way that they looked and regardless of the way they were executed, for me as a fan, now I'm like, flip, man. I'm not gonna know. <laughs> it's like it's a it's a it's a it's a backhanded lick. I know what the heck is going on. I know what's going on, and I'm not gonna see it. Nope. Not a chance. Oh, I, I, I can't say that. I can't say that. I can't. Say you, that. Can't, I can't you can't. I can't. You can't openly can't. say that because it's because you want to hold out hope. I understand. No, I, understand. I mean, I, I can't. What's the, what's the quote be... from Thanos? Run from it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know you are. Not, no, this is you're getting vengeance on me because I put you through WandaVision yep. and Lovecraft. That's mm-hmm. what that is. That's fine. I'll and take I'm just, it. I'll take, take the dagger. I'll take the dagger. You just might as well hey. just know it's not going to happen. Hey. Also, for the very, very last one, just. All I'm gonna say is CW did it better. That's it. And I can't believe CW did it better. Out of all things, I didn't I didn't think that was possible. So I, I I'm gonna have to talk to you offline about that because <laughs> I, I know exactly why it happened the way Jesus, it did. Man, because you, was, because oh, you know, God. you know I'm gonna have to talk to you about it offline because it wasn't supposed to be that. It, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that you know it man. wasn't supposed to be yes. Okay, okay, yes. we'll talk about it offline, and that's I think that's the legit why. <laughs> that's exactly why it, it, it yeah and i think well, that it honestly sticks if, out if, if, if amazingly it sticks out when you see the scenes that we know he added it's all of them stick out it's it's three four maybe three for sure and all of them stick out so this is what i'm gonna say there's one scene that happens i know it was in, but the scene that we're talking about I think he would have hit a lot differently if he would have gotten what he wanted. He just couldn't get it. You know what I'm talking about? Because you talked about it for, for, for I don't know how long. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. We're sitting there talking about, we're talking around stuff. We're an hour and 11 minutes. I think that we've done good job. The hour 11 this. minutes and didn't spoil anything. We hadn't spoiled a thing. I think that we came to a good impasse. Um, I, I mean, I, the I, movie. You love the movie. If we this again. Everything ain't for everybody, but I still think, hey, if you're going to go out and watch it, watch it. Enjoy yourself. Uh, stay away from spoilers. Stay away online. If you people can. Are, people, are giving, people are giving full spoiler reviews <coughs> online. So just stay away from anybody giving a full spoiler review before you see it, unless you don't mind and you just want to know more about the film and you're going to watch it anyway. Yeah, and I, I I'll, I'm gonna give Warner Brothers or Warner Media or AT and T a plug here. If you can, if you really do, really want to see this film, try to look at it the effective way. If you have HBO Max, try to check it out on March 18th, um, because it it is everywhere if, if, right if, now. If, if if you if you really <laughs> want this to even have a chance of going anywhere, and that, we're not saying that it will. Mm-hmm. Lucas believes it is no There's not no even happening. But if you want this to be if I could have that Thanos whole quote, I would say it right now. If if you want this to be <laughs> uh, effective metric wise, um, go and check it out on March the 18th. Again, we've gone through pretty much everything, and I haven't even really kind of gushed about other things. I kind of been really like specific to the target things that we didn't like. Um, I think that I really love this really interesting moment with uh, with Superman. Um, it hits different for me. It was a it was a scene on the farm where it's like, and that's one of those ones where like the theatrical, like I was like, oh, okay, I was kind of like really excited for it. It wasn't even so much the way his face was, it was an unnecessary um reshoot. Like it was just an unnecessary reshoot because just the way that it organically goes, that was the most, in my opinion, that Henry and um and Amy had they still don't chemistry, chemistry wise. Than they'd had in all the rest of them, though. Like that was the most romantic moment that they had in all of them. And that's, and that's, I mean, that's, I mean, I mean, very honest and blunt with she you guys. Was so miscast as as Lois Lane. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, but I'm saying that that scene oh, naturally man. flowed so much better than the theatrical. I loved um, this really interesting scene with um, your boy, Mister Fisher, and. Um, all I can say is this it's, it's a scene where he, before he cyborg um and I'm not even talking about like an action scene it was just a, a it was an interesting conversational moment 
um, that I really dug. Uh, there's another scene that I was going to ask you about it because I know you, I know how you feel about him as an actor. He, um, cannot, he cannot act. I'm sorry. So there's a scene. I remember championing him. You remember how much I used to talk that I was happy they casted him. And I say, you know what? It's great that you give uh, a, a, a black actor that has no credits beforehand a chance at something like this. And I hoped he would do great. So and instead, I got someone who cannot emote emotion. So this is the thing. <laughs> there's a scene that happens. And again, he's supposed to be a cyborg. But there's a scene that happens... A What's very, a very emotional scene. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it was a heartbreaking one. Okay, and the the moment that he stands up, right, and kind of maneuvers towards somewhere, um, and the flash is there at that moment. Mm -hmm. um, there's something that he does, bro, from an acting standpoint with prosthetics on that I was kind of like. Now, hopefully Lucas saw this. I saw that and I did not feel anything. I but he, but, but, how did, but again, the way that he did it on a dime, you can't, you, you, you don't get, you're not going to give him a pass on that. That I'm was a dope. Giving, that I'm not a, giving this ninja a pass for nothing. So I'm going to ask you this. You think that he played better in this than he did in the theatrical? I mean, he was equally bad in both. But, but, <laughs> At least no, in the theatrical, no. I didn't get to see him a lot, so I didn't mind him being bad. I didn't see him a lot because they they clearly cut everything out about <laughs> Cyborg in the theatrical cut, so I didn't have to see him not act well. So I didn't mind because I didn't see him not act well, and yeah, that's so, what I got to see him act uh, not so well more. So, and it, and it, it may not be him now. Keep in mind again, this was his first big role. He's a young kid here trying to do this and trying to pull this off. That's a lot of weight to put on. It's amazingly too much weight to put on a brand new actor. So I, so this is, I mean, this is where I guess we're going to disagree because I can't believe I'm saying it, honestly. I really did. Did the scene get to you because of a personal connection, sir? Or did his acting get to you? Because I can see the scene getting to you for a different reason than... Because there was nothing there acting wise. But I, think, I can see the impact of what that scene is getting to you. I mean, honestly, just the way that he was scripted, like the way that they actually script his character in this one, regardless of, I guess, the execution to your point. See, now, I'll go, see, now that's, a different, that's a different discussion, Samuel. That is a completely different discussion. Is if the character is placed in the right places in this film. Of course it is. The issue is when the actor isn't able to do the things that the character needs to make it more impactful. That's my issue. <clears throat> it ain't about the way they the way they uh, point Cyborg in the story. Cool. But a better actor should have been put in that role. I mean, do you, would you say this, that Cyborg is the humanity of this story? No. I would not say that. And and amazingly, the only time I had um, Mr. Alexander agree with me was based off of the same thing. Is that he was like, you know what? You're right about that. <laughs> he's, he's not the heart of this movie. I say, okay. I, and I, I said then, I said, I'm happy I'm not the only one who saw that. Mm -hmm. I said, and it's strictly because he it's 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 him in all I see. It's just him. And I don't blame him for it because this is his first big this was his first big role. And I think it was too much to put on him. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna do that with somebody, you needed to cast a more seasoned person to pull that off. I I don't know. It's it's hard because again I get more emotion out of Javon Wade's character on Doom Patrol than I get from any moment, any moment in this movie from Ray Fisher. So I'm gonna say this: when this was the second episode of Doom Patrol, where we get an understanding of what happened to him, mm -hmm. and he's having this like terrible, terrible God, <laughs> terrible flashback. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I I would say that that execution of that was. It was heartbreaking, man. Um, and I mean, this one was rough, 
but it wasn't on the same merits or even the same level. As I that. think that's I, when I, that's when you get an issue when you can actually when you have multiple people playing a character, you then you get to compare how certain mm -hmm. things play out and how certain emotions are shown, mm -hmm. and that's when he suffers. Because I've seen I've seen Cyborg go through something like this before, and man, did I feel for him. And here, it just felt like he was just going through the motions. See, I didn't. I'm not that harsh on it, man. I actually dug it. I it wasn't it wasn't um it wasn't that crippling to me, and it was an effective enough that I kind of cared. Because by the time we got to the third act, and there's this this quote that everybody's been using. And one of our good friends, one of our real good friends, who's actually a team member of Team JVS, he he legit, like, it, it, it struck a chord with him. And I don't know necessarily if it was Ray or if it was a scripting, and I can't speak for the same thing on my end. I just know that yeah. the experience of me watching it, I felt something, regardless of, it could, I guess, I guess it goes back to, if I was being nitpicky and said, could it have been executed better by somebody else? That's a that's a really good question, Lucas. If you that's if a really you, good question. If, that's if, a really good question. If the comic book person left and a film critic stepped in, I guarantee you, you would say it in a heartbeat. You'd anyway, have been like, anyway. yeah, I can see that he did. I already know. That's what I said. It, it's a different discussion because you're at you're at an eternal conflict with yourself between the two, and that's a perfect conflict for anybody to have. It's never an issue with that. If you're going to go in and enjoy this, to me, go and enjoy it. Don't feel bad that other people are going to trash it, that people are going to try to make you feel bad for enjoying it. The same way them blanks felt great about enjoying WandaVision, go into it and feel great about enjoying this. Yeah, it's just, I think that this is the thing, and I don't know how to really explain it, um, I guess for you to understand, but I, I am coming at this situation where it's like this is a film that's an event film um it's 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 this is something that is an impossible feat that happened um it for the the perfect amount of timing for the perfect amount of you know situation from from warner brothers and hbo max at t standpoint and for zach as well and deborah but what i didn't anticipate was watching this film i thought after i watched it, i was like man I, i'm I'm good. I'm going to do my review. I'm good. I didn't anticipate watching this and wanted to immediately watch it again. Wait, um, you, hold up, hold up. You didn't? No, I didn't. Because I'm because this is the thing. This Sam? is the thing. Wait, wait, Sam, Sam, Sam. Do do you know yourself? But no, I I'm... I think I I polled in one of in another chat the over and under you on watching this film would be five or six. So I am highly confused how you're confused that you will watch it multiple times. Because I didn't look at multiple times Infinity War or or Endgame. I didn't look at multiple times Batman versus Superman. But matter of fact, Batman versus Superman, I looked at that joint, I waited like a week how, and a half before I watched how, it again. How many times did you see The Last Jedi as opening weekend, sir? But I, but I love The Last Jedi. My point exactly! <laughs> 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 but, my point exactly but this is different it's a four hour film look it's like it doesn't it's, matter to me it doesn't matter with you it has nothing to do with the length of the film at all you watched the last jedi four times it's opening weekend i did and i loved every single time i watched <laughs> <laughs> i loved every single time now i mean again some of you guys hated the last Jedi. i didn't i really didn't i actually really enjoyed it but see, go ahead, go ahead. See, but then that I expected you to feel the same way. But I did. Just, just because your real feelings about Marvel comes out after you watch something does not have to do with when you really like something, you watch it multiple times. What? Ain't, there's no buts about it here, buddy. And then you have access to it at home. <laughs> it's always going to make it more. You will probably throw it on at a quiet moment. You're like, man, I got nothing. Let, let me turn this on again and see what happens. Actually, and then you'll watch the whole thing. And then you get wifey down. Hey, hey, babe, we should watch this. And then you watch it again. And then you're going to find another way to watch it within the next two days. You're going to find another reason to watch it again. I'm not crazy here. You're not going to make me sound like I'm crazy. And to better explain what you're trying to say when you say it's an event and you say, I don't know how to correlate it to something you would like. It's me watching Stephen King stuff. 
I hated the first episode of The Stand, and I watched every episode of that series. What? On the I edge of my you, seat. You said you would never look at any more episodes of that. I did say that, but it's Stephen King. I have no choice. What is wrong with you? I know I have no choice. <laughs> See, we all have our vices here. I just can admit I love everything by Stephen King, and I'm going to watch anything released that has Stephen King's name attached to it, especially if this is the books, because I've read every Stephen King book humanly possible. That doesn't mean I can't admit that it's bad. It's just that I like it. I mean, to be fair, like, I know I did this with Guardians of the Galaxy. I know I did this with Winter Soldier. Um, I think I did it with Ant-Man. You did um, it with Black but too. Did I? Yes, you did. No, I didn't. That wasn't me. Uh -uh. I looked at you? Black Panther you, twice, you look, and then you, I was... You looked at it twice in the same weekend, Sam. Yeah, but I had to. <laughs> it made me do it. <laughs> it made me do it. I, I Legit, if I hadn't done that, man, I would have been crucified straight up. But um, anyway, so yeah, I just, I bring that up because I want you guys to know, you know, every different dissection, for good or bad, like not even just what we think about different sections of the film, but also our personal perspective of the overarching side of it. Um, so hopefully we gave you guys. You didn't give your score, though. Of what? Of of this movie. I gave my score already. No, you didn't. We did, did. We did. No, we did not. We just said we liked it and disliked it. No one gave a score, sir. I did so, in the other I, video. I gave it. Well, nothing to do with this video. Out of 10, Sam, what did you give Zack Snyder's Justice League? I gave it a nine out of ten. See what I mean? Mm -mm -mm. I gave it a nine out of ten. Nine out of ten, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it a nine out of ten, and um, I give it a two, two and a half out of ten, two and a half out of ten. I thought you gave it a three. I did not give this movie a three out of ten. I could have swore you gave it a three out of ten. <laughs> it was a struggle getting a two and a half. Okay, <laughs> I could have sworn you said three out of ten. Mm -mm. Two and a half out of ten for Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to think what is the next thing we're supposed to be tackling? Falcon Winter Soldier. No, Superman. Is that too oh. right? Well, we're about no, actually, actually, because we skipped a week of Superman and we still oh, have not done flip. yet. Are but we doing that tonight? Not, not speaking of that, but our next thing that we're covering is tuesday we start southwest. with south by southwest so over the next week you're going to see Way lots of reviews from south by southwest maybe sam will do some interviews and some paneling stuff but mainly i will be just doing reviews of the 17 movies i signed up to review <laughs> for south by southwest yeah, and with that, you guys, like, we're not even just doing, like, movie stuff. We're going to be going and dissecting different technology stuff, yep. um, games. I don't know if we have enough time to do music. I'm going to try to do some music. Um, if they drop some exclusive stuff, then I would try to do it. But, man, the movie load is crazy. I, I, I feel like we might be at a disadvantage, you guys, because I do not have the Oculus, and they are throwing, like, VR at me real hard, and I can't do nothing <laughs> about it. I wish they would have did what Sunday did and give us some freaking Oculus risk, but anyway. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, that is our non-spoiler. I don't know how we did it, Lucas. And we kept hey. it simple. We kept it simple because we're good and friends. You, and you wanted to add your rally here. You was going to get just me and him yelling at each other back and forth about the movie. And then me throwing been. tenant in his face. I'd have did everything bad. It would have been bad. <laughs> it would have been bad. I, I kind of knew it was. Ultimately, I really did know it would probably have been better just me and you did it. Because I felt like we would have been able to expound on you know everything. And that's um, why I don't want to do a spoiler anywhere. review of it. Because... No angry Lucas here. You all got it already. I did it with Man of Steel, our review. I did it with WandaVision's finale. What I what? am being as docile as humanly possible. Oh, right I now. thought you were talking about the the real cut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the real. Like, like, the yeah, real. I'm not, I'm just not, I'm not in the mood to yell and scream about this movie. I just had to get it out that I didn't like the movie. It is what it is. I did not like this in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But we can still have a conversation about it and not have to yell the entire time. <laughs>
<laughs> you couldn't help yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't help yourself. And to be and to be clear, you guys, there are people out there that really did enjoy it. Uh, two of my good friends, um, Ty, uh, who's in the middle with the screaming, and then Keaton, who's actually a member of Team JVS. He, they both really enjoyed it. Uh, Jarrell loved it. Jarrell think gave it a ten out of ten, yeah, this um, is, which is not surprising because he gave ten out of ten out of ten. Also, people, but just want to be, give... be be mindful that uh, <laughs> and he he does cover his bases, uh, making sure people know that he got a spoiler review out. Uh, but he has a non spoiler review where he does a really good job talking about it without saying anything. Um, I think it's called his reaction video. So definitely go and check him out. Um, he's going doing YouTube full time. So definitely, if you can, try to. <clears throat> um, Join his Patreon. Um, he's got a lot of things coming up, and he's also going to be a part of our South by Southwest mm -hmm. coverage as well. So I, I subtracted two dollars from his Patreon for me for his take on Justice League. I'll put it back. No, back no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm like, no, I'm gonna take away two dollars for your take on Justice League, sir. <laughs> you, you're gonna learn a day. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this um, and you saw it from different angles that we kind of talked about it because no movie is perfect. This movie is definitely not perfect. There are things that you can pick apart to it to the end of the day and there are things about it you can gush about as a fan and as an immersive comic mm -hmm. enthusiast until the end of the day as well. Like it is, there's, it's all across the board. You can go to different people's reviews and dissections Critically, people are going to start to go a different route with this. You already know it. You already um, know. Just prepare yourselves for it. But I am very pleasantly surprised that it's still red. Um, well, it's only 100 I, reviews in. Don't say that I, yet. But, but Don't no, jump I'm, too fast. No, I'm not jumping. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say we this. We saw them shit real. on Wonder Woman. Dude, Wonder Woman, after 100 or so reviews, was at 85. It is down to 56. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what happened. I don't yeah. know what happened. Dude. Yeah, 80, 84 got got shut down bad. <sighs> um, but I will say this, uh, Lucas. I thought this morning, and I I sent a tweet out there. I don't know where I put that tweet at. Hold on, I'm gonna pull the tweet up. Oh, about there. uh, but also didn't we have to talk about why it has been this way? Because for people that don't remember. Rotten Tomato did one of the worst experiments humanly possible when the first Justice League dropped. And that was they held every review back and did a freaking television show to reveal all the critical reviews for it at one time, which they which they only did it at once and have never done it again. They never, never done it. Yeah, never I, done it again. I kind of was like, when they did that joint, I was like, now I know Warner Brothers, I know y'all own this. <laughs> and I was kind of just like, I know y'all put a lot to get Joss in here and and get people wanting to go to the theater. I mean, no, no, I no. Just, Eventually, we're going to have a, at another time, we're going to have a true discussion about the theatrical cut of Justice League and what AT&T mandated happened with that film versus what people think Warner Brothers had to do with it, because most people forget AT&T bought Warner Brothers out while this movie was in production. Yeah, so, uh, well, I mean, well, I'm going to say this, Lucas. Since you're never going to see, supposedly never going to see Zack Snyder's Justice League again, oh, are we still again. having never, our ever. mystery science theater for the theatrical? I don't we were supposed to do that. Oh, yeah. I'll definitely do I mean, that. We technically didn't even do BBS, but yeah, I don't, don't want to do that movie. I don't. I don't want to sit through three and a half hours of Batman and Superman fighting and Batman being angry. All these movies with Zack Snyder, Batman is angry. Okay, this is what I said. I said in about 50 minutes, press embargo is going to live, but regardless of what Rotten Tomatoes or Metacritic um whatever we say yeah, i was talking about me specifically go and check out the film for yourself experience it on thursday march 18th on hbo max you gotta see it for yourself there's a cut and so yeah that's what i kind of put up there because i i was like well, i was like people, oh my gosh people, people still don't don't go to metacritic because it, mm -mm, don't go there <laughs> yeah no yeah no don't don't don't, don't, go, to don't go to metacritic because metacritic is giving you mm -mm. 
Nope. It's 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 a lot on Metacritic, but I'm <laughs> I'm saying that I was I legit got up this morning, Lucas, and I was kind of like, oh no, like I was even telling my wife, I was like, well, honey, you know what? We gave it our best. <laughs> <laughs> put our best foot forward. I, I, you know, I let people know how I feel about it, you know. But I, I, I am still very surprised that that critics are saying they partially like and enjoy now, the film. Now, keep in mind, it's, it's no top critics that are saying that, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know the what big, I mean. Lucas. The big trades are. Sh- you wow. know what I mean. I'm talking about because wow. normally they would jump on. Normally, everybody would be jumping on the same as that bandwagon. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, I just think it hasn't happened yet. I, I, all- I, I learned my lesson with Wonder Woman 84 at this point. I learned my lesson because mm-hmm. I saw what those reviews say. And I said, wait a minute. How come I come back here a week or two later and it's just steadily dropping? Like, it, it's... It becomes the will of the people at a certain point in time, and I think that's what they're waiting for more than anything else. Is, what for uh, Justice League? Yes, they're waiting for the will of the people, and the will of the people normally means when people start talking about it, what are their perceptions for it? Because I'm still a fan, I'm still a firm believer, and I know Sam is too. A lot of critics wait for fans to react first, then they drop a review on something. And then that's how it either goes super positive or super negative. Which because is... I don't think a lot of critics actually watch these movies, but they have to post a Rotten Tomato review. So what they do is wait for enough of an audience reaction, then they give you one. And because it's, it's kind of hard. It's, it's really kind of hard for smaller critics to voice their honest opinion about things. Because then they think that either one, they'll be blackballed by the studio by talking about it a certain way, or they'll be blackballed by people. And it's out of fear that they do stuff like that. Instead of watching it and giving them the, giving you all their honest opinion, they'll lie to you. They'll tell you Black Panther was a good movie. They'll tell you Endgame was the best thing they've ever seen. And they know they're lying. They know they're lying. But they have to do it. It's like Grace Randolph saying that this is a masterful movie. You've done 84 interviews with Zack Snyder. What else were you going to say? Or her crying that Avatar beat uh, Endgame at the box office because Endgame was the best experience she's ever had in the movie theater. Come on now. Wait, crying. she was We're crying? Crying. Like she's yeah. actually crying? Not crying, crying. Her oh, words, okay. I was about to words were crying. She said re-releases shouldn't count. And that just wholly throws out that every movie has been re-released. Yeah, and just so you guys know, man, like there there is something to what Lucas is saying because I mean a lot of times I'm kind of left at the crux of you guys. Like sometimes you guys are like, man, what the heck is Sam saying? This is my case in point right here. I went and looked at Gods of the King of the Monsters, and I was like, I don't like it. I was like, I don't really like it like that. I don't really vibe with it. I actually like the 2005 version better. And I got crucified. I got hung out of drive. Me and a good friend, Big Go Bell Podcast, mm-hmm. <laughs> were like thrashed. But we were giving our honest, concise opinions. It wasn't about whether you guys felt one way or not. It was like from an integrity standpoint, that's exactly how we felt as soon as we did it. Most of the time when we do these reviews, we shoot them the day that we actually watched it, unless it's just too much emotionally. And even then, we'll give it like 24 hours. And I know that Lucas is the yeah. same exact way. It's a and quick so, turnaround. <laughs> and so, like, whatever we give you guys, this is exactly how it is, exactly how we're feeling in the moment for good or bad or for whatever way you feel about it. So, I, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I'm always going to do that. Um, yeah, because I said some horrible regardless. things about this movie. Horrible right after watching it. Oh, they recorded. Feel, they're recorded. They're recorded. Yeah, of course. I haven't it should be. Yet. I haven't now, I, yet. I don't feel as bad as I felt then, but boy, I still don't think it's a good movie. But back, that was a raw, raw emotional <laughs> oh, rant yeah. I went on about this movie and mm. how much I hated it. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. If y'all knew, <laughs> I wish I could pull it up right now. Lucas was saying some stuff that I was like, now, Lucas, I don't know if this is. Like, lot. I felt like at some point, logic just went out of Lucas. Like was, he was just like, "I was mad. This is how I feel. Forget yes. this movie. <laughs> Book this movie and this mic. And you for doing this with me. And like, 
<laughs> I kind of was like, I felt a little, I felt a little hurt. I was like, dang, oh, Lucas, like, I mean, okay, bro. That's how you feel. And this is this is this was so bad. And this is how we, I mean, I think me and Lucas try to do this for each other as well. Is that when Lucas was saying all that, I kind of was like, but well, dang, I felt like I really enjoyed it, but maybe I feel wrong. Because <laughs> we were doing a reaction, me, him, and Jarrell were doing a reaction, and I kind of was like, I mean, I really enjoyed it, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I just looked at this the wrong way, you know. And and like, uh, and then Jarrell had a whole different reaction, and it was just, it was a mess. But but that's why we always say, watch it for yourself. Because in the end, I'm still champion. For anybody, if you have HBO Max, go watch this movie. If you don't have HBO Max, it's a pretty cool streaming service. Grab it, watch this movie, then maybe check out Tom and Jerry. Hopefully they don't play this movie again in the middle of Tom and Jerry, and you can watch the whole movie of Tom and Jerry. But then watch something else. Judas and the Black Messiah grabbed six nominations today. Watch that one. Pick up the service if you're going to watch this film. Please don't get it the way that some people are already getting it. That's unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah, like enjoy it in in the in the best way humanly possible right now to enjoy it. Check it out and judge for yourself. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to Sam. If you like it, you like it, and it's nothing wrong with it at yeah. all. If you hate it, it's nothing wrong with it at all. In the end, it's still just your opinion. Yeah. Man, this is crazy right now. What's going on? They still can't do the premiere. The premiere still isn't working. Yeah. And I think the press screeners are not working either. Um, so right now it seems like WB has shut down every. Well, not WB. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to say WB because you all think WB has something to do with this. It's nothing to do with Warner Brothers. Warner Media is shutting down everything because uh, multiple 4K versions of this film have leaked. But I know you all out there won't go see it online. You'll wait to Thursday. To Thursday. And watch it on HBO Max. Please do. Please, if you if you really if do you, want if, to, if to... you don't watch it on HBO Max, you'll get nothing but more and more Marvel projects dropping over and over and over again. Oh, sweet the the press uh, the press link now works. So I'm about to go watch the rest of this with white See what I mean? Woo-hoo! See what I mean? Didn't hey! I just say find another way to watch this hey! movie again? <laughs> No, I, no, no, but no, I don't no. know. I told Sam you, watching I, movie. At, I started looking at it with wifey <laughs> last night, and I said to her, Once it gets back working, then we'll finish it because she wants to finish it. Uh huh. And then you'll that'll be your third time. And then on Wednesday, you'll watch it a fourth time. And then on Friday, no, no, you'll no, watch no, no. it again. No, no, on Thursday, I will watch it for probably my last time. That'll be my fourth time because that's when it drops. Probably, so I'll watch it on probably. HBO Max. Probably at least at least at least you're attempting to lie to yourself properly. You're gonna watch it again. You're gonna be like, man, oh snap. I need to watch this again. Oh snap. <laughs> Somebody brought up this. I think I missed okay. that moment. So I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. Because <laughs> Lucas didn't know me at, at this time. There was a time that I used to go to the theaters so much. And back when the Dark Knight came out, I saw the Dark Knight in the theaters about 32 times. See what I mean? 32. See. So, I mean, what he's saying is not wrong. I mean, part of this is a mental thing. So it's, it's but I also am an efficient critic as well. So I, there, there is merit to what Lucas is saying. Mm, Everything mm, Lucas mm. is saying is not completely wrong. That is crazy. Um, 32 times? Uh, yes. Can I tell you, I saw The Dark Knight in theaters at the end of its run once. We ain't friends no more. <laughs> so it once at the end of its run. So wait, so wait, but but you you own it though, right? Oh, I've seen a Dark Knight now at least forty times. Okay, okay. But see, I watch movies just at home. I I go to a theater. I'm watching it once, and then I can review it. I don't need to watch it. I don't need to watch anything multiple times in theater. I can't. I'm, I'm going to get bored, and I'm going to fall asleep. Yeah, so I, I'll say this now. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> like after I became a family man, going to the movies multiple times just wasn't economical. Hey, nor did I in, have the I've seen Endgame at least five times. What, you know like, how much I hate that movie? I've seen it five times. Wait, why? Why are you seeing it? Five it's times? like the perfect movie to put me to sleep. 
Because the action is going on in the background? Yeah, it's like perfect to sleep to. It's nothing I care about. It's and, mindless. Uh, so and that's perfect. the other thing, you guys, that I didn't bring this up in our discussion because now, good Lord, we're done this. It's probably the longest <laughs> video we've ever done. Um, but I, I feel like we cool. We cool this. So it's not it's not a it's not a bad, bad space. But I felt like when, at a certain point I was watching this movie and I was like, that feels like an end game moment that's about to go mm-hmm. down. And I was like, I know how Lucas feels about Endgame. Mm. And this isn't a series either, even though it should have been. Uh, I don't know what Lucas is about to do with this. And then I got a text message from Lucas. Lucas was like, man, I feel sick with this freaking mess. <laughs> did, the night, did, the, did the such and such moment happen? And um, I was like, bro, it ain't happened yet, though. <laughs> so I knew, I knew then that, yeah, this may not be Lucas's cup of tea. But again, I mean, it definitely, there are moments that feel like in game. There's moments that feel straight out of a graphic novel for me. Um, as a Batman fan, I mean, I, if I can't say nothing else, and again, you, you, you already heard what I said about The Dark Knight. I How many times I've seen The Dark Knight? I love Batman. It did not, I do not like Ben Affleck as Batman. And so I love I, Ben Affleck. So I, I actually know. really enjoyed his version of Batman in this over the theatrical. And the theatrical had made him look Bruce like a Wayne. I love his version of Bruce Wayne. I don't oh. love him as Batman. See, it's, see, that's that's hard for me to understand because this is the first Batman that we've actually ever gotten that can defend against anything outside of a normal human being. Well, he's the first Batman that's had to. <laughs> yeah, but it's the first one we get to see, though. Like, it's, it's kind of like for me, it's kind of like I've always wanted to. But you see know what it, it is? It's it's. It's the same issue that uh, comic book people have with Batman. It's like, in all honesty, why is Batman able to fight aliens? Why? He's Batman. He's a man dressed as a bat. That's it. He's a man dressed as a bat. Why are you able to fight aliens? He's rich. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Like It makes no sense here. It makes as much sense as Tony Stark in his magical suit. Like it, 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 yeah, it, it doesn't make no sense. sense, but it's freaking awesome, dog. It, it, Look. it puts Batman in places where I don't need Batman to be. But I need the, Robert Pattinson smashing some guy's head in saying, I am vengeance. That's the Batman I need. I, I don't I, want to see Batman fighting aliens. I just don't. With it, magical cuffs. He had magical cuffs. Sam, but, come but, on, man. But Batman. But that's what a that's the thing. That's what a comic book. That's it happens, bro. It happens but all you know the what? time in comic. in comic books. Batman is much smarter than he's been in any movie I've seen. Oh yeah, absolutely. He's an actual detective. Absolutely. Yeah, there's and, no detective work done in this movie. And he he's does like the picture <laughs> of physical perfection. Like not only well, is he well, smarter than everybody, but like as a man, like it's nothing that he can't do. Um, but it's that's hard to convey when he's up there with other superhumans and like he doesn't have a superhuman suit like he needs tony stark needs to make batman a bat suit he did i mean in the comics he actually did he already he already did that batman had a a tony that's what i mean he need he needs a a iron man bat suit he batman beyond there you go he needs that suit so i'm gonna ask you this question about batman beyond since we're just wasting time at this point um (laughs) do you think (laughs) Do you think that if they do, oh man, if they do a Batman Beyond and they allow Michael Keaton to be an old Bruce Wayne, people are gonna shit themselves. Let's <laughs> understand that they are, they are going to go off if you see Keaton in there with a cane and he's old Bruce Wayne and Terry McGinnis shows up. That's it. So, who do you think they should cast? Because I, I for real, for real. Would love uh what's that ninja? Is it Dylan O'Brien? Is that his name? Oh, from American Assassin. Yeah, because they were in the mm-hmm. same freaking it was like mm-hmm. when I was watching, I was like, you know what? They really mm-hmm. make a run for this joint. He was Terry McGinnis? Yes. That would be dope. I, I think that he's young enough that I was like, you know what? I could see this joint. Yeah, you, don't have so. to do, you don't have to do teenage Terry McGinnis. Not at all. No. Nah. It'll work perfectly. 
And if you can, if they put Batman Beyond into the Flashpoint movie, again, I think the whole goal of Flashpoint is to make people forget that anything from Zack Snyder ever was made. It is very simple. I think that is the goal, is to make you forget about it. So any clamoring you may have and saying people who say, well, we want to see more of this. If they give you certain elements in the Flashpoint movie, it'll take away any need for that to have happened. Do you think that if you take away the the scene that we don't speak of, right? Mm -hmm. Couldn't this easily flow straight into the Flash movie? If you oh. take that scene off? Oh, you have to cut lots more than that for me for it to flow. But No, I mean, yeah. but I'm talking about like just the main beats. Because the way that this ends, especially with the Flash... Well, it's, it's set up to be something that could lead into a Flashpoint movie. Yeah, because, I mean... You know, we yeah, can talk about it. without saying it, yes. Yes, it can easily lead into a Flashpoint movie. And I think that would have been the case until they brought Andy on. When they brought Andy on, and he basically said, I wrote my version of what Flashpoint would be. That told me everything I needed to know. Yeah. Do you think they're going to take any of the abilities and the principles that they did? Because there's a lot of cool things they do with Flash in this. Except for Run. Oh, he runs like an ice dancer. I think I, I don't think I don't think it's going to change. I think they're going to give him a different suit. I know that for a fact. But I wonder if the powers are going to just transfer over because Honestly, I mean, but isn't that technically part of his power set anyway? But not like that. They haven't done it like that. Like, well, even but with... I mean, they haven't done it like that. But isn't that still part of his power set? Flash is the most powerful uh, superhero out of any comic. I don't care what comic you go to. Flash is the most powerful because of what Flash can do. So, how do I put it? Yes and no. There's something that Zach does with this that I don't think I've ever considered um, with the way that he even from interacts with matter. No, no, no. Like, no, no. Yeah, because it, the way he interacts with matter, like, because normally it's kind of like, you know, he can vibrate around stuff, like he can go and like maneuver himself around the world, you know, but there's something that he does with matter in this that I was like, anyway, I don't want to go into it. But I'm just, I'm just saying that there's something that they do with this that I really hope that they do, or Andy at least emulates in some way, shape, or form in his film, which he probably won't. But <laughs> it would be freaking dope if he did. It would be freaking dope if he did. What I'm anyway. going for it seems like for one media is to say, hey, um, this character was introduced here, but um, this is our version of him, and just like they did with all the other movies. Yes, every other movie. Because Aquaman, Wonder man, Woman, um, that is not the same. <laughs> like everybody looks different. I said, "Oh, they just said, yep, no, we we're not gonna go with this angle of everything." And it's more obvious than any with Wonder Woman than anybody else. <sighs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're done. Hope y'all enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good, the bad, Zack Snyder's Justice League is coming March 18th. Go and check it out on HBO Max. Peace, everybody.